Good eye everybody around the world. Welcome to my channel, The Road Pirate. Yeah, I am very, very, very excited. Time to stay gets shorter and shorter and shorter. And uh, this weekend people will come at my apartment and they pick up all my furniture and I sold everything. And then I will stay one or two nights at a friend's house, I think. And uh, we celebrate a bit my going on the road yeah the last videos from itchy boots a uh, this girl it's amazing this woman she is fantastic put my head off for you darling uh yeah and uh, i figured something out I, she is born on the in holland of course grew up in holland and uh, she must be a Frisian uh, girl, woman, you know. Uh, I am also a Frisian. Aha! The whole Holland, Belgium, Germany, Denmark, everything, when the people that live on the North Sea, on the North Coast, and they are called Frisian people. And we got our own language. We don't talk German or Netherlands. We talk Friesisch. And I think she grew up with that as well. So we had to fight the water for generations, you know. And it was said in the early days, the first generation's dead. The second generation's worry, worry to survive. And the third generation, they make some bread to eat. So it, it was like a swamp, and there were no dikes, of course, and the tide came in twice a day and uh, overfloated everything, you know, and they, the Friesian people have to, had to fight for three, three generations to, to be safe, you know, and they had to build dikes and, and uh, put mud up to build a house on and stuff like that, and from there she is. So she, the Frisian people, they got guts. And uh, when she left, she sold everything. She all what she wanted to get on the road, live a nomadic lifestyle. And as a woman, it's uh, we have to give her credit. Unbelievable. I mean, today she is the the queen of all dirt roads in the world. So I'm I'm very happy to see her keep going and the yeah the Friesish people they can do that they got uh, power and guts and they are somehow stubborn to do their thing you know and they do their thing and that's exactly what she is I see the Friesish Friesish blood in it and um, yeah I hope when I see the last videos with the uh, with the military people they took the camera yes they do that and i think i don't wish but i think the further she goes to nigeria niger cameroon and this country is congo uh, there is a lot of military so she must be very very be careful. It will come. There will come bad situations. I think. Uh, I don't wish really, but uh, over there, people are different, you know. And the army is not good. I had my experience uh, when I crossed the Zahara. I had to ride on my bike uh, 1,760 kilometers without petrol, without water, without anything. And there was a, in between Algerian and Mali, there was a military station in the desert. There was a little, little shed and uh, it was outside anyway, hot, hot, hot. But in there, it was really hot. I just was dripping and sweating. And he accused me, that officer, whatever, military man, he accused me I got fake papers. 
And uh, I said, no, I, d I don't, have th these papers are legal and everything is okay. And he said, how do you want to prove that? And uh, I said, what I have to do, you know, what, how, how can I prove these papers are right? You know, they are stamped by the German government and the health, health uh, uh, office and stuff like that. Well, he said, uh, okay, put your hands on the table. So I put my hands on the desk. And he grabbed under the table. No, first he put a gun on the desk as well. So I, my hands were next to it. I don't know. He wanted to scare me. And then he grabbed under the desk and he uh, get a glass, a jaw glass out. And there was a black scorpion in it. And he threw that black scorpion on the desk where my hands are and the gun. And he said, when you move, you show me that you got fake papers. Unbelievable, how stupid. So I didn't move at all. I was just sweating. My heart was pumping like crazy and there was shoots of adrenaline and everything. And I was young, you know, 20 something years. So the, the scorpion was running around my hands. And the scorpion didn't do anything to me. I trusted that scorpion more than <laughs> that guy. And uh, after five minutes, he said, okay, you, you can go. It's fine with me, you know. And uh, I had to go to my bike and another army man with a gun, with a rifle and everything. I had to unpack my completely gear and everything and he could use even my dirty underwear I want this I want that and, and certainly there came a man but it didn't look like a man it it looked like uh, a creature dirty like hell the hair was unbelievable you hardly could see the face and he had no legs he was working, walking on his hands. He had no legs. And he came in front of me and he puts his hand out. He wanted something, you know, food, water, whatever. And this army man, he took his rifle off and he pushed it in the air and he hit this man with the shaft what you put here of the rifle, full lens in the brain, in the head. And the brain, the, the, the skull broke. And he killed that man. The, the brain was splashing on my boots. That's what I saw right in front of me. And I had my hands behind me and I, my fingernails, they, they went in the flesh. Uh, when I took them back, they were bleeding, you know, and I couldn't do bloody nothing about it. I couldn't do anything. I was full shocked. I was so shocked that it, it, it took me years to get over that. It was not nice at all. So <clears throat> that's just a little story what I had. I, and I really hope from my heart that she doesn't have experience like that. But the Nisha, Nigeria, what do you think? Will she go there? Will she, will she take the risk to go there and look? I don't know. I don't know if she does it or she, she doesn't do it or she does it. She can go around it when she wants, but I'm really, how can I say that? Uh, I don't want to scare her or anything, but she should consider maybe to go around it. That would be my advice. But the end, it's up to her, you know, and she is not not dumb or stupid or whatever she she can consider 
the risk. She can balance it out, what how big the risk is, and but she has to be awfully be careful. All my best. All my best, Norali. The Friesish woman. She can show the world what's going on. She is fantastic. I'm with you with my heart and follow you. So don't do anything what you can't do. Push, push behind your borders. You, you can do that. But also consider the, the risk, you know. Put it on a scale. Is it worth going in a war zone? Some people do, you know. Journalists, they do it. They are right in the middle of something, shooting, fight. Some get killed, some not. So, Noralia, I wish you all the best, all the best from my heart. Thank you, people, for watching me. And yeah, like they all say, give me a like, give me a share, tell your friends, give me some subscribers. I still working on my channel. The videos they will get better and longer. I got GoPro now. And uh, I got a new laptop because my old one couldn't keep up with this high quality uh, videos from, from Go GoPro, you know. So I had to buy a new laptop with, with uh, 68 gigabyte and uh, graphic cards and all that stuff. And oh, man, I'm going so confused sometimes with all that stuff. But I will work on it. And I hope uh, I can give you, my goal is giving you 30 minute videos twice a week. Please stay with me, follow me and come with me on the road. All the best, all the best. See you later. Bye.